S'more Outdoor, Episode 2. Welcome to S'more Outdoor, where we speak with authors, entrepreneurs, and business owners about how the outdoors has affected their life and their projects. This show is to remind you of the healing properties of the outdoors. So are you ready to learn what the nature effect can do for your life? Well, here's your host, Brett Trout. Hello and welcome to another episode of S'more Outdoor. I'm your host, Brett Trout, and this is the podcast dedicated to reminding you to get out and experience the nature effect. My goal is to help you reestablish your connection with nature so you can live with childlike wonder again. And I'm doing that through this show by interviewing other entrepreneurs and business owners to help share their story on how they use the outdoors for inspiration, motivation, and just really to unplug, relax, and stress. So I'm really excited today. I have the founder of the Free Agent Academy, Kevin Miller, who's also the marketing and brand director of Ziegler Performance, host of the new Ziegler podcast and show, and the Free Agent Uprising show. He's an athlete, daddy to seven, grateful husband to one, a beverage advocate, and Rocky Mountain lover. He says the wilderness is his sanctuary. So there you go, Kevin. There's a little intro from me. Why don't you take a moment and just tell our listeners who you are, uh, about your business, and what you love about the outdoors, and we'll dive into the questions. Oh, man. Thanks uh, for having me on here, Brett. And as you'll you'll hear in the questions that uh, are coming up here, the outdoors is such a significant part of uh, who I am. I mean, you know that even with Free Agent Academy, with my business, I branded it, even the visual branding online around mountains and outdoors. And as we look at business these days, where especially when you're in premium services, products and services, you know, it's so much people want to know who's behind it. And uh, me, I man, that's who I am. I'm the guy that lives out in the mountains with a big family. And uh, most everything I share social media wise ends up just being about outdoors and athleticism. And it's just what my wife says. It's what makes my cells vibrate. I love the term, um, not just something that you have fun at or you know whatever, but I really it, it makes me more of who I am. Awesome. That's great to hear. And so for those of you who don't know Kevin Miller, he lives at, uh, what, 9,000 feet up, yeah. in, uh, up in the Rockies. Uh, I've had a great opportunity. I met Kevin back in uh, 2009. He's been a good mentor, coach, really helped develop this business from something completely different than when I started. I originally started and was interested in uh, you know seeking his guidance for financial and career coaching, and and so we've come a long way you know in this process. So um, you know thanks to Kevin and and his family for just being such an inspiration to me. Uh, had a chance to visit him uh, with a bunch of other free agents, and the place where he lives is just absolutely stunning and amazing up there. So. Definitely thanks for again for being here, Kevin. So let's go ahead and just kind of jump right into this. Oh, one more thing. Kevin's a huge advocate of S'more Outdoor, which it makes me feel real good and my Mountain Man Soap. So that's really exciting to, oh, to know. And, and that is huge. I mean, you know, I work with a lot of people with business stuff, but then there's always a segment of people who their product or service is something that I just adore. And yeah, <laughs> Mountain Man Soap. Now I've been using your soap and we gave it away at, uh, to all the attendees at events for, I don't know, three years, four years or, or something. Yes. And, and then your whole concept was smart outdoor. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's one of those things I want it to exist because I want to be an advocate of it. I want to be an attendee. I want to send people to it. So yeah, you know, I love it. Well, thank you so much. So let's go ahead and jump right into the questions. And the first one I like to start off with is is everybody, and I've been doing some research online and Pinterest, there's so many different people out there putting out a bunch of nature quotes. And it got me thinking about what do people love? Why do people love these nature quotes so much? And why do people have so many, why do people have pictures of, or photographs of nature and of pitch paintings of, of nature in their homes and things like that and and what it inspires in them. To me, it's like we're missing something. We're not, we need that as a constant reminder that we're supposed to get outdoors, even though we don't. And so the first one is, why don't you go ahead and share your favorite quote or mantra and how uh, the S'more Outdoor listeners can apply this quote to their life. 
Well, you put that question out there, a quote, and I thought, you know, first thought it needs to be something really, you know, really deep and weighty. And I, I, we have this John Muir quote down uh, in our kitchen. But then my eyes immediately saw this other little, really plain kind of a, a, a um, oh, kind of a, a ceramic disc type thing. Or no, it's pottery, pottery disc that somebody made us. And it just simply says, if you're lucky enough to live in the mountains, you're lucky enough. And I thought, you know, that's probably the one that brings a smile uh, to my face more often than not. And I look at that and I think, you know what? Damn straight. I'm I yeah. just grateful for that, though. It means a lot more to me. It's, you know, on, on the aspect of luck. Am I lucky enough to live in the mountains? Yeah, but I worked really hard to be here and to be in a surrounding that really I believed in I believed it was best for me for sure and but for my family it's what my heart was for them and we we this was um this was something that we made as a huge priority and we overcame a lot to be where we are so even though the the quote says you know if you're lucky enough uh it's something that you know luck was when preparation met opportunity and we made it happen and I but I'm grateful for that and it brings a smile to my face no, I love it. That's a, definitely an awesome quote. Uh, the, one thing I forgot to share is, is uh, can you just tell our listeners what your home is actually made out of? A lot of people probably don't know that. And to me, it's fascinating. I heard about this a long time ago, and then, but I didn't know anybody who made their home out of it. Yeah, well, we stumbled upon it, but our, our idea, we were living in this cheap old house up here in, in, in the mountains, but uh, it was something that we just first had gotten into when we came here. And then it was a long process, and we decided finally that we wanted to build. Found this incredible dream property. We bought that, and then the idea was big because we were at the time. I don't think we had seven kids, but we were headed that direction. And and I wanted a big house, uh, but not fancy. My wife and I are just uh, not. We're not designers. We're not fancy. And every time we'd go looking at homes to buy, we would see stuff. That my wife just said, it's just so superfluous. I wouldn't have paid for that. So with our house, let's make it as let's make it big, but make it as efficient uh, and uh, easy and simple as possible. So as you've seen, it's just a huge box, and we were looking at different things to make it efficient. And I had stumbled into some friends a couple years before that who had a house with straw bale walls. But if you look at that, you see a lot of stuff where people make straw homes and it's real crafty, usually real small. And ours is a big two-story, 4,800-square-foot post and beam home. So it could have had regular siding on it, but it, it has these big expanses uh, that we just then literally had a whole bunch of friends out here, about 450 bales of straw. And that those were the walls that were put in, cut in around the windows and everything. And then you put stucco on both sides. So we end up with on average about 21 inch walls. And with the stucco on both sides, it's like a, a a fortress. And it's like living in a cocoon is what my friend said. And it absolutely is. I mean, when the UPS guy pulls up, we don't hear him. And the insulation's ridiculous so that we can have uh, primarily, it's just heated by a huge wood burning stove downstairs that uh, heats up the house and you just don't lose the heat. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. And sometimes I step back and go, man, I, I just, I'm really amazed that it actually worked, but it did. It was fun. And I would definitely do it again. I mean, the insulation factor is, is out of this world. So yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of goofy, but uh, eh, it works for us. Yeah. And it's cool. It's a cool concept and cool idea. And when you think of uh, homes in the mountains, you know, most people who've never been to the mountains and don't live near mountains, think of log cabins. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like that. So for your home to the post and beam with a straw bale, hay, you know, it's just I think it's really cool. And, and uh, I had always thought that that would be a neat style of home to build someday. So well, thanks. And log log is hard not to. I mean, I, I mean, the look of it is incredible. Some of our best friends. Matter of fact, my wife's on a getaway right now at, at, at some friend's cabin and unbelievable as far as the look and the feel of these big logs. But they're not near as energy efficient. Uh, they're a pain in the butt to to build and uh, expensive you know, ultimately. So you know, <laughs> give, yeah. give and take. Yes, definitely. So let me take you back to a childhood memory. So tell us a story from your childhood about an experience that you had the, in the outdoors. Take us to that time in your life and and really share with us, you know, that that particular story. 
Well, I, I thought about this and, you know, childhood memories. I mean, the outdoors was not a real big part of my childhood. We lived in, in cities and neighborhoods. And uh, I mean, I, I was definitely very impacted by my grandparents' farm, my dad's parents, his their farm up in Ohio and my uncle, his farm. And I would go spend time there and especially having snow up there were these idyllic holiday times. So those, there's a lot of memories around there that were pretty significant, but as far as a true outdoor type memory that impacted me, that came when I was about 17 or 18. Um, I had just started racing bikes, uh, bicycles at an elite level. And we went with a couple buddies to, I lived in Nash or I lived in a uh, Nashville area and we went to Gatlinburg to Klingman's dome, it's, which is the highest point in the smoky mountains. I think it tops out at like 6,200 feet. And we were going to ride our bikes just for kind of a training and a fun experience. We camped out the night before. So in my young adult, or even, even, even older childhood, young adulthood, this was, I just didn't camping and, and getting out wasn't a part of life. And uh, so here we are camping in this campground outside of Gatlinburg. Uh, some guy gets out a little boom box and starts playing James Taylor, crackling fire and out there. And it just hit me. I don't know why. That's what hit me that, oh, my gosh, this I just could feel my heart swell. This is significant. Next day we get up and it's something like a 27 mile ride from the bottom to the top of Klingman's Dome at 6,200 feet. And we start out in the morning and we're just engulfed in thick clouds. I mean, the kind that are just wet. So the front of our bikes were getting wet. And of course we were getting wet, riding up through, riding up through. There wasn't much traffic because of that. And then we popped out on top of the clouds. So we're on our bikes and it's like being on a plane, you know, on top of the clouds, just a sea of clouds. And I was, I was done. I mean, I was, I was hooked. I was, I mean, the mountains became a part of my soul from that point on. That was a significant memory that implanted outdoors, the nature effect inside of me. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for sharing that story. And, and both of those, even with your childhood memory of going to, a farm, mm -hmm. uh, your grandparents' farm and the snow and just the environment around there, you know, definitely has an impact for uh, certain people. But the your story about the uh, what's it called? Klingman's Dome? Klingman's Dome. Yeah. Klingman's Dome. People don't realize that. And the, when I when I was listening to you tell that story, it reminded me and, and I talk about it um, and previous things that I've done. But is the there's comes a point where it's just like something like that hit you about the outdoors you know i know when it was i grew up around the outdoors uh, we used to go camping and hiking and, and water skiing a lot at the different lakes but it really didn't you know i loved being out there but it didn't really hit me it didn't have an impact until i came home from college and we were up in and i had gone and i had wanted to travel the world and see different things which is which would have been fun but when i got home and, and my buddies took me up to the mountains where i'd never even been hiking where i'd lived my whole life I realized, you know, I didn't need to spend all this money traveling the world when I hadn't even explored my own backyard. Yeah. And so from that moment on, and, and so I know I can relate with you in that, that experience is it, it's just like something just hits you and especially to be listening to James Taylor, you know, <laughs> Absolutely, uh, you man. know it's and, that near and dear to my heart. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thanks for that story. So the next one's about an outdoor experience that you had. Uh, other, maybe that you want to use the same one or something different, but tell a story of a time uh, when you visited the most beautiful place you had ever been to and take us to that time in your life and tell us that story and just share with us the experience and the effect nature had on you. I, when I was 19, I believe, I, again, was living in the Nashville area and I moved to Fort Collins, Colorado. And was training there, just full-time uh, training for cycling. And, but we spent a lot of time out in the woods. We'd go out mountain biking, hiking, whatever. And I started, and this may have even gotten into my, been around the age of 20 or so, started having more times where I would just go out by myself. And there's some great, incredible places out, out in the foothills and beyond. And I was out, and I believe it was Lori State Park. Um, and, and, you know, to take that and say, was that the most beautiful place ever? I don't know. But in this moment, it was just kind of a culmination for my life of being out there by myself with a journal. And I had had just a bunch of significant 
experiences. Uh, I think the week before I had been up in Glen Haven, which is on the way up to Estes Park, and I was sitting on the edge of a cliff uh, on a rock. It was misty, and I had my journal. I was writing, and this rainbow appeared right there in the valley. And it was just, so it was things were kind of bubbling up in me uh, in a lot of ways. And so, you know, a week later, Lori State Park. I'm out there, and it just the magnificence of creation hit me. And I'm a guy who grew up in the Bible Belt and in church, and definitely had faith, but man, after I left home, it wasn't something that was predominant in my life. I was just doing, doing life. And I got hit right then and there with just the reality for me of a divine creator of, and this, I just can't go with the, you know, some of the theories out there other than this was inspired by the greatest artist of all time. And that moment right there was one of the most beautiful outdoor moments because it was, yeah, it was like a movie scene where everything was uh, quadrupled in effect and the colors and the brilliance and just hit my soul, obviously at a deep spiritual level, but that's where, and still has continued to be where I really experience God the most. Oh, thanks so much for, for sharing that. That's, uh, you know, people don't re- I don't think people realize that enough. Um, I read a lot of John Muir stuff and he talks about, yeah. like, especially in Yosemite and, and just the Yosemite being this valley, being this giant cathedral and just the feeling, you know, it's hard to express those feelings unless you're there. Uh, yeah. And so I completely relate with that story. Now, during that time, do you think, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure obviously, since you live in Colorado, that that inspired you to eventually go back Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, we, I, we, we ended up, I ended up back, met my wife in again, that Nashville area. She had a contract singing, acting and dancing. And we ended up there and then you have a kid and two kids and my, my, some of my other family moved there. And my wife would say about every six months I'd have my Colorado crisis, uh, of just, I wanted to get back out there. I wanted the kids to live out there. And we ended up in uh, Silicon Valley area for a contract with a, um, a client at one point. And then that kind of solidified. We could just go anywhere. And she says, well, honey, Colorado's where you always wanted to go. I had a friend that kind of wooed me this direction. And yeah, that's what brought us back was that initial love. Though I had just thought Rocky Mountains. But I mean, really, when I look around, it's it's I got to admit, I've got a bias with Colorado. It's you're talking about exploring your backyard as much as there are some incredibly grand places around the world that I would like to get to sometime, I, I don't, I could spend about an endless amount of time just exploring Colorado. I mean, the, you know, the amount of, of 14ers that we have and different environments and canyons and water and rivers and uh, wilderness is profound. So yeah, I'm definitely uh, a sold out Colorado lover. That's awesome to hear. And for those of you that don't know, 14ers are what, 14,000 foot? Yes. Yeah. Is that yeah, what and, I, and I always forget the number, but it's something like, you know, North America has, I don't know, 60 of them or something like that. And 52 of them, I think, are in Colorado. So that's kind of a big thing around here. People will climb 14ers for one, you know, which is get to, you know, get to the peak. Um, but then someone will see, you know, how many can they do? Or I have, I have a friend, uh, two friends, actually two brothers who have done every single one of them. Um, so it's kind of a big deal. Uh, no, that is the definitely huge deal out there. I know I was talking to a friend of ours, Justin Lucas Savage. Yeah. Um, he shares a lot of information about, uh, the 14ers and pictures about him hiking and stuff. And, and, uh, so yeah, definitely Colorado, beautiful place. It is awesome. So the nature effect, I came up with this term uh, a few years back about just basically how nature affects us and and the impact it has. Um, How does the nature effect have an impact in your business and life today? I feel like it's what it's what centers me. I mean, I already talked about a, a spiritual component, of course, but it just it just centers me. And, you know, may sometimes I think, am I Am I, am I less tolerant than other people are? Am I weaker than other people that I need this? I feel like it's something that I need for my, my soul. And, and I, it centers me, it grounds me, it opens me up, it inspires me. So I spend a lot of time just out for health and wellness. But yeah, even from a business standpoint, 
Uh, I'll go out just to go out, go for a run or whatever, just to think on a topic. And sometimes I'll be aware and go, gosh, I'm out here in this great, glorious place and I'm not seeing anything. But I think, you know, this is what people do on treadmills and stuff. At least I'm out on a trail and uh, I'm, and I'm thinking and that, that nature, I just can't emulate it anywhere else. I've lived a lot of places. I've traveled a lot of places and it is, I wish I could define it. I can't, maybe, maybe you'll be able to, as you're doing this and talking with more people, it significantly impacts me in my wellness in any given moment, my ability, honestly. And I think I am much more the fullness of who I am from intellect to health, to, to, to spiritual and, and more by when I immerse myself in the wilderness. The big thing for a lot of people is, you know, this day and age, we're so distracted. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, uh, even now, it's like you get stuck in, in what I like to call, I think you were the first one that helped me come up with the term, but the electrical paradise. You, you get so caught up online and, and just different things that you can't really sit down and think as well. And most of my great inspirations for things that I would like to do have come out when I'm driving up to Yosemite or Sequoia or just hiking around or whatever. Yeah. Someday we'll figure out what that actually is and what it does to us. Yeah. So awesome. Well, thank you. So speaking of inspiration, what's, uh, what's one idea that you've had that you would like to share with us uh, that was inspired from your time in the outdoors? I, I know I looked at that question and I thought, Oh, Oh my gosh, that'd be like, uh, you know, which glass of wine was your favorite? Yeah. Oh my, geez, I just, I've enjoyed a lot. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I really do. I mean, if I look at, you know, the ideas and the decisions that we have made, most of those have solidified for me when I am outdoors and often, honestly, on a run. And I mean, I'll take ideas from my business that I'm grappling with and I'm sitting here at the computer and I'll go, oh, I just can't, I can't get there. And I'll, I'll try to conceptualize a couple points and then go, go out for a run. And how many times have I come up with a solid idea or an inspiration um, or, yeah, just getting rid of the clutter and, and kind of getting narrowed in uh, so many times? I mean, I, honestly, I wanted to come up with some brilliant story of one specific inspiration. But there, I mean, from the, you know, deciding to build our house and what it was going to be like. I mean, my wife and I turned to the outdoors a lot. We Where we live here, we go up on this. We're kind of down in a valley where we don't have the big Pikes Peak view because if you have the Pikes Peak view, you usually have – wind as well and for little kids and stuff uh we wanted to get out of the wind so it's you know it's a two and a half minute walk up to the ridge and then uh and then we go a little bit further out it's one of my favorite views of pikes peak where we do a lot of running hiking and my wife will go out there and just hang out and that has been a place where we have made so many or gotten clarity on so many decisions gotten so many different um, ideas. So, I mean, I'll literally, I've done it for me. I'll do it for clients where I'm trying to think, you know, come up with their branding idea or something like that, or just a personal decision. And I just use it as part of my think tank. Uh, I really do. So it is, it is the place that I go for inspiration. So to come up with one, um, I'm at a loss for. <laughs> no, that's okay. Cause, uh, knowing what you do and what you help people do, uh, you just said it really, you know, for mainly for clarity Mm-hmm. And as your think tank, so so many ideas have come out of that, yeah. and uh, your whole life is based around the outdoors. So I can imagine all the different ideas that you do come up with uh, when you just want to step out your front door. Yeah, and, uh, and a- so. absolutely. And, and this is one thing you've heard me say before, but I do. I look at the value, the outdoors, and it's not like that's my only thing. There's many things for health and wellness and inspiration that I, that I look at and I, and I feel like these things are not luxuries. These are, these are responsibilities. I mean, that, which is why we, we overcame a lot to build a big house out here in dreamland before we could afford it. When our kids were, I wanted them to experience it when they were little. I was afraid that I'd be like so many people who they finally get that dream place after the kids are gone. And I wanted it now, and I felt like this. We need it. I, I just felt called to it. You know, I won't. I won't make it a right or wrong or black or white. But it was a personal calling that I am daily grateful for. You know, you said something there that it put a smile on my face, and uh, and so I'm thinking of your Rocky Mountain Dreamland. Yeah, uh, is what you call it. So awesome. Well, thank you. So the next few questions are just going to be uh, not so much in depth questions, but just kind of quick questions because I want you to share some some insights for our listeners 
um, yeah. to help them understand people who who struggle. Uh, and one of the questions is about getting outdoors as much. But so the first one, what do you do when you get outdoors? So you talked a lot of a lot about running um, and thinking. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Uh, we do. I mean, just our day. I mean, of course, you know, we live out here in the woods, but daily stuff, our back deck, I built this 700 square foot deck in the back and our house faces solar south. So even though we're you know up here at 9,300 feet uh, in the Rockies and there's plenty of, you know, cold and chilly weather, it really pockets the heat to where, I mean, you can lay out and get a suntan, uh, you know, nine months out of the year at different points because of the sun and the heat and the directness of it. We spend so much time out there on that deck, just talking, doing life, you know, with a, a Bible and a journal or, uh, having a picnic. We spend, I mean, that's, that's, that's our outdoor focal point, I guess, is that now I go out almost daily for runs and ride trail runs. It's all, there's no pavement for miles around here. So, uh, that and mountain bike rides I do, we have a high mountain lake up here and I sp- we spend a lot of time there. This last We've gotten into kayaking, just lake kayaking and canoeing. So we've been buying kayaks and canoes. And we went almost every weekend. It takes us about, uh, I mean, as the crow flies, we're about a mile and a half from the lake. But to go to the boat ramp and get the boats down, it's like 15 minutes. Man, we've spent so much time there. It's become a part of our family's uh, life. And even our friends, we get them coming out and bring, you know, bring uh, kayaks and canoes for them as well. So that's a big piece. Cutting wood. I mean, we heat the house primarily with wood. So I spend a lot of time in our woods cutting down, standing dead. And I love the workout and love the reason to just get out there under the trees. And so those are just primary, you know, daily, daily aspects. Oh, gosh. And, and our fire pit. We have a fire pit stones throw from the house that we have had some of the most precious moments of friends and family ever around that fire pit. Now it's gotten to be a place where my older kids bring their, you know, high school friends and they'll have parties and, and uh, gatherings out there at that, uh, a fire pit. So it's, it's a, it's a sacred space for us now. So I'm sitting here with a smile on my face because it's like, oh, that's my dream personally, is to be in a place like that, to be able to, not so much in the city. But one thing that, that uh, you know, that our listeners can take away from that, well, obviously you spend so much time around it and the impact that it has on you. But you said, you know, your back porch, just yeah. going out there and sitting on the back porch and just being out there and you spend a lot of time on that porch. And so that's one of the things that, that I want people to be encouraged to do too, is, is to get outside, whether it's on your front porch or on your back porch and just hang out for a little while. If you have to take your phone out there or your computer out there, go ahead and do that as well. Um, But it's so nice to, I was talking to a gentleman uh, that you and I know, uh, his name's Eric. And he was just saying, sometimes he forgets that even his back, you know, the back porch uh, the place where you can go and, you know, listen when it rains, just listen to the rainfall and just that peacefulness mm-hmm. uh, that it can do. So thank you for sharing for that. And yeah. when you when you don't spend time outdoors, you know, what negative, I mean, you, you spend a lot, but when you don't, what negative effects do you see in your life and business? I, yeah, I do spend a lot of time. I mean, even when I, we were in the Nashville area, we were down in Franklin, uh, Tennessee, which is kind of a, a suburb of Nashville. And we lived out in the country on, uh, on a bunch of land. So not, you know, I'm 10 minutes from the mall, but we were out, uh, literally in the, in the country. So I am used to that when I don't have it, it, yeah. I mean, I got to admit, it's just, I feel ungrounded. Like I can't get my bearings. I, I raced for a team in Holland a long time ago, but I, and I didn't have this kind of perspective conceptualized at the time. My entire time there, I struggled so much with, it's like, I couldn't get my bearings. Of course, Holland is dead flat. It's very overpopulated. There's no, I mean, there's, there's not only no mountains, there's no hills. They actually have a hill. It's man-made. It's a park. <laughs> and I just can't get my bearings. Um, I do some trips now that I'm working with Ziggler. They're down in Dallas and I struggle with, I just, I can't, I can't tell directions to save my life for one thing, but I just start looking for any place to get away. And I, you know, I'm sure it's just anytime you're, you're immersed in something, especially something that you really love to get away from it. 
is probably a little more painful. No different than, you know, I grew up in the heat and humidity more. And now that we're up here in a dry and cooler climate, when I go back to that heat and humidity, I'm, I'm so unacclimated from it, it about kills me. So I think it's more acute, you know, for better or worse now that, yeah, I think that's the best word is I just can't quite get my bearings. And then I struggle with just finding peace. Well, and you said something uh, just a few moments ago about when you're immersed in this world, you know, and, and you're immersed in the world of the outdoors and around your property and around your home, uh, that you're, you're, you can't get your bearings out, but you're immersed in that world. And that's very similar to how people are in their, in their homes. You know, they're immersed in this world around their homes that they're not used to. They're used to that feeling. Yeah. You know, and, and they're not used to being able to getting out and experiencing that feeling as well. So uh, <laughs> when I go back and listen to the interview and, and I'll pull that out because I was writing some things down. It's, and I got to admit, man, I, you know, I got my kids here in the house and we'll go. It'll be a beautiful Saturday afternoon and I'm out in the deck and my wife is and we're doing stuff. And I'll realize my kids have been inside, you know, playing Legos or doing something. I, guys, get out. I don't bring your Legos outside. If you want to but get under the sun. You know, yeah. we're all prone, I think, naturally to our you know, to our homes. And uh, so I understand it as well. It's It's always it's usually still an intentional effort. So how do you make sure? Um, you actually had written this and that's where this question came from and a while back when we were talking about the launch of the podcast, but you had said that it's the most, it needs to be the most important thing to do in your life. So how do you make sure uh, that it's the most important thing that you do in your life? I, I'm, I had to move to it. I mean, in all reality, I just realized that with myself and what I experienced with a lot of other people, that are we are busier and busier it's just a reality of our culture and we can you know be we can complain about it but i just looked at it and go, you know it just is and i'm one of those guys too who i'm busy and i i take on a lot and i overcommit and uh and i like to be busy too you know and and so if i have to then stop and make an effort to go towards something of health like the outdoors like this, it's just not going to happen that much. If I'm going to actually participate in it, engage in it, digest it, I just need to live in it. So, I mean, I, I literally, I mean, it was that important that I, I don't want to have to pack up our stuff and travel to somewhere. I need it right side, uh, right outside of my outdoors. So I did that, you know, again, even when I lived in a city in the Nashville area, we went out to where uh, at the time it was when I was bike racing a lot and it was an area that a lot of people in Nashville came to ride their bikes and I moved there and it's out in the country and beautiful roads, beautiful hillside. And I, I moved there. So we've always made it just a priority. And, and I think for that, for people who are listening to this, who feel drawn to this, you know, the question of you know, what should they do? And my thought was, okay, you're supposed to find some little, you know, easy thing to do. But no, my first thought was move. But it doesn't mean you have to move to 9,300 feet up in the Rockies. And you said something a minute ago about even just, you know, your, your backyard. My sister and her husband live in Nashville and they live in Nashville. They have, I have no idea what their, pro I mean, it's a neighborhood, but they have a decent sized backyard. I have no idea what it is. It's, you know, a quarter of an acre, an eighth of an acre. I don't know. It's not that, it's not that big, but they have made their porch that's, that's like an outside living room with couches and chairs and awnings and lights and music to where outdoors is the place that you gather there. Then they have a garden, they have chickens, uh, and they have this incredible tree that I'm so envious of, honestly. I mean, I've got, you know, tree Mecca, but we have, we have fir trees, you know, evergreen trees, and then we have these huge tall aspens, but they have one of these trees that's yeah, an epic tree with huge swings off of it, massive trunk and branches that go out. And I can be there and feel that peace. And it's in the middle of the city. Uh, you know, so if, if somebody's in a, a track home or the little McMansions, they don't have that. I mean, you can find places that, that aren't yeah, leaving the state or, or going way out that just give you that feeling, give you that perspective. And it may be just the right spot. I remember I was in a condo once with my wife for a short period of time and we had the, it, I thought of all the settings kind of, we had the one that was sheltered by trees. We had squirrels all over the place. I thought, this is the best it could be for the outdoor experience, even though we're in a condo. So I, 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 there's, there's one aspect of it. No, and I hear you. And that was one of the things that 
when a few years back when I had the opportunity to move uh, a few hours north from uh, the city I was living in to be closer to Yosemite and Sequoia, I knew that we still had to live in the city temporarily. But I wanted to make sure that, you know, I had moved from a home that had this five foot backyard, you know, five foot around the house, fenced track home into, you know, so I was searching for for home. And we were definitely blessed with a home that has huge backyard, nine giant redwoods. Uh, You know, the house was built in the mid 80s. And so the redwoods were planted around that time. And uh, so for us, yeah, definitely, it's it's we did just that. We had an opportunity. Now, not a lot of people will have an opportunity to move, but the conscious choice that you make going forward, if you do move, invite that environment into your life. Uh, that would be a huge. cool idea, Brett. Why don't you spawn? That'll be your next business uh, channel. Is is like backyard, outdoor makeovers. You know, I'm, I mean, I could see yeah. doing that. You know, okay, fire pit here. If you can't have a fire pit, you can have a a chimney or a, you know, whatever, uh, and some natural wood benches and plant some trees and just do some things to bring the outdoors into your backyard. That'd be cool. Kind of like that, you know, the de- deal people are doing now where they're turning their yards into gardens, uh, right? That same concept. I think, Oh man, I would be all over that. You know, and even, uh, even with people doing that, it's just, you know, they they're bringing that, that environment because they know how important it is mm-hmm. uh, to bring that into your life. Yeah. So you have plenty of plenty of them and you've talked about of them, a few of them. But what's one of your favorite places to go to uh, where you, you like to go on runs? Um, but do you have a special spot like near your home or, or out on the trail somewhere that you find yourself drawn to, I guess, to go uh, out and, and do some of that relaxing yeah. and thinking? I do. And, and it, it literally, I run, I run up the uh, fence line, a neighbor's fence. I run up it, uh, up to actually to the road. It's a dirt road, Rampart Range Road that goes uh, along the ridge all the way down to Colorado Springs and almost all the way up to Denver. And I have this section that I go up and run. And I was telling my wife the other day, as much as I'm a guy who likes change, I mean, if I if there's 10 different ways to, to you know, go from A to B and you got to do it a lot, I'm going to go a different way every time. I enjoy the change. I enjoy the variety. But my run is 95% of the time I go to the exact same place because if I've just got 20 or 30 minutes, I just want to go out and get a run. I want to get out. I go th- get up on the road, go through the trees and then pop out. And it's just glory Uh, it's this massive view pikes peak looks 50 times bigger than anywhere else it's this these rolling pastures up on top there's an elk herd that stays around seasonally so a lot i mean a lot of times it's up there matter of fact it just it would they walk through my kids came this morning knocked on my door i had just was just getting out of bed they said daddy the elk herd's out in the yard and go out there and there was 60 to 80 uh elk uh, just moving through the yard this is this is ridiculous uh but up there on that ridge, that's where I go constantly. Just to, it's like the best breath of fresh air, and that's where I spend. Yeah, the majority of my my outings just to get up there with that view. I can see uh, seventy miles to the west, and, and often see the Collegiate Mountains and the Snow Cap Mountains there, and it just fills my soul. So that's that's the spot. So what's the best advice that you have for someone who wants to get out more but struggles with that limited amount of time that they have to get out? It's a lot of what we've talked about is, is making it a priority. I mean, it's like we say with everything, you know, if, if the question was, so for somebody who wants to lose weight or get healthy or whatever, it's, it's always the same question. And it is for all of us. It seems like the biggest battle in our culture's lives is what we make priority. So many things that are grasping for our time. So is it a priority or, or not? And if it is, something's going to have to give. You're going to have to give up something. Space has got to be made. And is it enough to just have a little deposit once a week or once a month? Or if this is something you hear and you go, no, it makes sense to me that the outdoors is something that I as a human need then what's going to have to change? Is it a move? Is it a move cross town or a move out into the country from where you are? Is it a move out of state? Uh, what is it? I mean, you, you mentioned Justin Lucas Savage. You know, he's, he's a good friend who moved here uh, to, to the same little town that I live at because it inspired him. But just to maybe just to consider how important is it and what do you need to do to make that happen? I, that means more to me than anything. My wife right now is away on a three or four day getaway 
And that's something that as a mom of seven that she used to go through and think, oh, gosh, you know, I'd love to get away. I need a break. But she feel guilty. And then we realized, you know what it does for her to get away? Oh, my gosh, it's one of the most important things ever. So we need to shift anything to make that possible because it's an asset. It, it, it makes her so much better of a person that we are going to ju- we'll take I'll take, a, uh, you know, make less money, whatever, to afford the time for her to go get away in that same. And that that made it all the difference. Now it's something that she does every quarter. She's gone right now. And I'm, you know, I got work and clients and, and, uh, so many things going on. And now I've got all the kids and you can make a case for how, oh my gosh, it's just too much. Oh my gosh. It's so well worth it. So again, same thing, taking it. And if this outdoor, this nature effect that you're talking about, Brett, and you're bringing to people, if you hear it and you believe it and you, you're going to have to make it a priority, how is that going to happen? And be intentional. Be intentional. And, and for all the, all of you listening out there, it's one of those things you're listening today to myself and and Kevin Miller and hearing how important it is for us in our lives. You know, we didn't, we didn't become these mountain men just on a whim or or whatever. And and yes, we grew up in around an environment uh, where we could go to, but we've discovered how important it is and, and how it impacts our life and what we can create and what we can dream and what we can do with the outdoors and being around the outdoors. And, and just yep. like Kevin has his famous spot, I have my or favorite spot. I have, I have a bunch of favorite spots, but one that I really like to go to is typically usually the same spot in Yosemite Valley. You know, I'll go sit by the Merced River. I've got a view of Half Dome, a view of Yosemite Falls. And it's just a, such a beautiful place to go to and just to become inspired. So find a place like that for yourself to to really go out, even if it's just a local park um, yeah. that you can get to. If you live in the city, you know, just someplace where you can try and spend, you know, an hour or so, even if it's once a week, uh, just to be able to get out there and relax on that. So, Kevin, you know, thanks so much for being here with me today and, and sharing your story uh, with our li- listeners and helping me get this message out to people. So can you share some final words of encouragement and how some more outdoor listeners can connect with you? Yeah, I mean, I think that on this topic that obviously I'm passionate about that, I I think we've spent so much time thinking about our, you know, the house we live in, the clothes we wear, the car we drive, the phone or the watch that we use on a daily basis, the purse that we carry, the, these types of things, but less and less do we pay attention to the environment that we actually live in, whether it's the place that we work, the place we come home to. And I, we're seeing the results of that in people's lack of peace, in their stress, in so many different manifestations and yet we look at like an artist and, you know, let's take especially a, you know, I love Seth Godin's term, you know, that we are all artists. We all have art. And I absolutely 100% believe that. But let's think of an artist that we generally would give that label to uh, somebody in the visual arts, let's say a painter, that we expect that when they are, when somebody's going to paint, that they are going to immerse themselves in an environment that is conducive to creating that spectacular art that they're trying to pull out of themselves. And we expect that we would almost even if, even without knowing much, if somebody said, Hey, I really want to paint this, you know, great outdoor setting, or I really want to paint this meaningful, you know, picture, we would expect them to set the mood to get themselves in a place with, you know, candlelight or outdoors or music, uh, solitude, whatever, so that they can get the most out of them. And yet we don't then take that to us and go, why would we, why would any of us not have that same truth as a part of our lives for getting the best out of ourselves, even if it is an hour out of the day or a half day out of the week or or whatever, we have some specific times. And yeah, in this sense of that health and wellness and vitality and inspiration and spiritual aspect and everything to go, I, I need that outdoor, I need that nature effect. I need to get my feet on the earth. I need need to uh, do that. But that is again, so important and we're missing it because it's just not the thing that's glaring. It's not yelling at us like everything else. Uh, maybe that's a quote there. Nature's not going to yell at you. You have to come to it. Everything else will yell at you. So man, as far as, far as me, yeah, to uh, connect with me, I, you know, I'm, you know me, I'm a, I'm a Facebook, actually I'm an Instagram guy. Most of everything that I do uh, social media wise, now everybody, you know, I, my website's freeagentacademy.com and uh, they can come there, freeagentacademy.com. Email me even at agent at freeagentacademy.com. 
but uh, I connect, I do a lot of my connection through I, I Instagram. Here's a picture, write a note. And that's what I put out on Facebook and Twitter. And then a lot of times I come to Facebook and interact with people there. So at Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash agent K as in Kevin Miller, agent K Miller. And that is primarily I'm posting pictures uh outdoors <laughs> either either that or from here in my home and i have such a blast talking with people there and 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 communicating with them about their adventures and their experiences outside which tends to be the you know the peers that i connect with got people like you and i uh, really enjoy that so i'm uh, honored to connect with anybody there awesome thanks so much oh and one more thing could you just kind of give a, a little um uh maybe an intro. Well, I don't know if it's an intro or what you call it, but just the, the new project that you're actually working on with, uh, with Tom Ziegler. Yeah, man. Uh, Ziegler, I grew up going to motivational seminars and all those kind of things with my, with my dad. And those are, are things that have really kind of gone by the wayside, but out of all the people that were in that arena on that platform, Zig Ziegler always stuck out to me. Uh, I actually got the chance to meet him as a kid a couple of times and loved his authenticity and felt he really had a heart for people. Today, the Italia, talk about Facebook, man, their brand and their brand primarily is around quotes from he's one of the most quoted people of all time, Zig Ziglar. And they put his quotes now on these inspirational posters. And it is uh, it's going nuts. It, it's, it's unbelievable. So Facebook, they're growing at about 100,000 new likes per month. And now are gosh, what are, what are we now? Like two million six hundred or, or six hundred thousand or seven hundred thousand, and I think people are so dying for that encouragement, for that those those inspirations that call them to more. And that was indicative of Zig. He thought you know everybody can be better, and he wanted to help them be better. Uh, so now today, Tom Ziegler, who I've become friends with, is running it. And I was talking with Tom. I've gotten to host a couple of their shows over the past years. And I was talking with him, I don't know, four or five months ago, I guess, and just how are things going? Because Zig passed away about a year and a half ago. How are things going with the brand? How are things going? I had some ideas. And through that, he just said, hey, let's let's look at doing something together. And it's something I have a heart for. So I'm really looking at how can we take what's happening here and expand it and get more people integrated into this, you know, pursuit of personal success and believing that they can do and be more. So I just am relaunching the Ziegler podcast, uh, which has been dormant for a year and a half, yet it's still getting uh, last month. It got 170,000 downloads anyways. Uh, so I'm going to be relaunching that, be the new host of the show. And um, I just am a fan and, you know, I'm a, as much as I talk about outdoors, man, I'm a fan of the encouragement, inspiration that comes from the Ziegler, you know, Ziegler Inc. and from their team there, an incredible group of people. And I love what they're doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for you and just to be able to see you go into that aspect um, and be connected with Ziegler and, and see what comes of the podcast and just kind of listen in as you're, you're speaking and doing your show with them. So that's really exciting as well. Uh, thank, thank you, Brett. Yeah, thank so you. Thanks again, Kevin, for sharing your, your outdoor story with us here on, on S'more Outdoor Podcast. And uh, we'll definitely be in touch soon. Uh, my honor, Brett. Thank you. I, I'm a fan. I'll do all I can to get your message here out to people because I'm, I'm your number one fan. That's it for today's episode of S'more Outdoor. I'm just so excited to be here with you today to share the stories and outdoor experiences from people like Kevin. So a few things before I go. You can head on over to s'moreoutdoor.com to see the recap of Kevin's show on his show notes page, along with ways that you can connect with him. Just type Kevin in the search bar. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, we would love it if you would leave a comment on his page where Kevin and I will respond. To stay updated with new episodes, make sure you subscribe to the podcast by either clicking subscribe in iTunes on the subscribe button on Kevin's show notes page or from the app on your phone. If you'd leave a comment and rating for the show in iTunes, that would be awesome. This helps to get the show noticed so others like you and I can learn about how the nature effect can have an impact in their lives and become inspired by these stories. Also, like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash s'more outdoor and follow us on Twitter. The username is at the at symbol B A Trout, B A T R A U D T. And make sure you sign up at s'more outdoor. That way you won't miss out on any exclusive content that I send out. So I hope Kevin's story has inspired you to reconnect with nature 
and start living with childlike wonder again. Thank you for tuning in to the show that's changing lives around the world. Until next time, I challenge you to do something this week to get some more outdoor. outdoors.